Hey friends, um, welcome to June, yay! I apologize I didn't get May's readings done. Some of you were kind of like sending emails or leaving comments on different videos saying, what the fudge, where is May? Um, and if you follow on the Facebook page, that's a better place to keep updated with what's going on. I'm going to make a video about, um, you know, if, for those of you who have followed me for a long time, you know that I used to be super, super consistent and like ahead of the game. Um, but the last like year and a half to two years has been complete upheaval and like just crazy shit in my life. So I'm going to make a video about that later because there's like a lot of spiritual like lessons and things in that that a lot of people will benefit from, including um, like, you know, how to predict and navigate your way through different things that come up if you were to read your own tarot cards and like, anyway whatever. The thing I wanted to say before we started our reading is that moving forward, like after June, yeah, I would say like probably about August of this year, everything, all the ducks should be in a row and things will get back on track so you can look forward to that. Uh, but in advance of that, I wanted to let you know, for those of you who are intending to purchase um, video readings, throughout like the first two weeks of June, there might be a delay in those. I um, am having a nose surgery, my nose is broken and it's causing sinus infections a lot. So I'll we'll have like this big thing on my face. And so um, like a little, uh, what do they call that, a splint? And then maybe some black eyes after that. So I don't know how up for video reading I'm going to be uh, straight out the gate. But I will be keeping on top of email readings and phone readings. So there's that. Um, now, this month, what the reading looks like for you guys is what you can expect in work with your money. Because sometimes those are related, sometimes they're not. In your love life, whether you're single, coupled, or in an on-again, off-again relationship, like an undefined relationship. Maybe it's new and it's not Facebook official. Maybe, um, you know, you're polyamorous. Maybe you're the other woman in a uh, relationship or, I guess, the other man, you know, whatever. Maybe it's a sugar daddy situation or a, a sugar baby situation. What do they call it when the guy, leave it in the comments if you know, when the guy, is it a kept man? If it's the dude that has a sugar mama? Anyway, yeah, if you know, let me know because I'm curious. And then we're also going to be looking at, you know, just kind of socially, like what do your relationships look like or what do you need to be aware of for this month, um, whether that is friends or family kind of situations. We're going to talk about your lucky day, um, which chakras you need to work on, what is your crystal of the month, uh, so many things in these readings this month. So um, let's just get started with it. Hey Aquarius, so in regards to work this month, they're saying it might not be a very happy environment for you. You're just not connected to it anymore. So should you be looking for something else? Yeah, something that really like nurtures you, that feeds your soul. Um, a lot of you just kind of glancing at the cards that I will pull from different decks at the end of the reading, um, kind of say that, like you're encouraged to kind of move towards this sort of leadership role. And um, we'll get to that at the end. But what it's saying is like people look at you and they admire you. They might be intimidated by you. So you don't really know that all the time, but you are very much um, a very loved human being that a lot of people admire and look up to and it's because of the way that you nurture okay so like if you're not feeling nurtured and supported by your workplace then it's time to move on now this is not necessarily and i feel like a lot of you just kind of need to be in more of a position of leadership like um you need to be sort of setting the tone or showing people how it's not necessarily as a teacher but i think a lot of you will end up um, kind of walking that path so whether you do it through your own business or you know through a different way um i feel like for a lot of people this is like social activism in a lot of ways maybe you run for congress or something like that who knows but um for the rest of you that are not in that mindset um they're just saying like you know at work you're just happy that you don't have a lot to complain about. <laughs> um, and that is a blessing, you're right. They're saying, um, you know, it's a little bit boring, so there's nothing to complain about, to sensationalize. Um, but 
they say, you know, that being said, it's not necessarily even like, oh, I'm just choosing to ignore the details. It's like, it's just a little bit humdrum right now and it's peaceful and it's good. And, you know, I think a lot of the choices that you and your colleagues have made are the reasons why it is that way and you should continue to make those choices. Um, they say, but, you know, also focusing on what can we do next though? even though that might be a fear of disturbing the peace. So what's going on with your money? They're saying spiritualize it more or it's not gonna change. Think of money as an energy flow. So the more love we give out, the more we receive the same thing with money. Um, the more love we attach to money, the more we get it back. If you have a mindset that money is the root of all evil or um, you know the people who have a lot of money that they have some sort of, um, you know, they think they're better than other people or something like that. And you also have the mindset that you're like a humble, you know, good person, then you're not in alignment with money and it'll be hard to achieve it. So think about these things from a spiritual perspective. Um, I think it's Christy Marie Sheldon who has some good videos on that. Um, as far as your love life goes for singles, they're saying you're really focused on what you want and that's a good thing. They say, but here's the thing, like when you get it, are you maybe a little bit afraid that you'll be like, oh, that's it? Like I'm like, if you have a crush and then they, it's likely in the month of June, if this is you, that you have a crush, like they say, oh yeah, let's date. And you're like, okay, um, but that's it. Like you're a little disappointed, like you've idealized them too much. But for the rest of you, um, that you don't necessarily have a crush or a focus, you're just focused on falling in love, this could be the month that you do, that you meet the right person where it just kind of like overflows. They say we're not gonna give you too many details in a general reading because that will play out different for everybody. So a personal one is better. But they say if you have a lot of confidence and joy and you like know the right person's gonna show up in the right time in the right way, for a lot of you, that's this month. They say um, the big challenge is you know, the devil's in the details. It's kind of like, oh wait, I tuned in to watch this reading and now I'm annoyed because she can't give details. Well, yeah, because this is for like every Aquarius who's gonna watch it. And they're like, don't feel like upset or irritated by that because number one, it's free, right? <laughs> number two, um, they say that, wait, I lost my train of thought. Um, why is, why shouldn't you get annoyed? Oh, because um, that takes you momentarily out of that like lovey-dovey flow. Just be like happy and you know trust that it's coming. Now, for those of you who are coupled, they're saying that um, there's some sort of phase or situation that you guys are not yet done with. But the good news about it is that it's like a it's like this phase or cycle that brings a lot of love and connection for you. You might be a little bit more cuddly than usual. Things are kind of just going your way in your relationship and it's due to karma from previously. Like you've done a lot of hard work to get to this place where you're just like in this receiving flow where things are really good. They say your communication is awesome. Um, send, remind your partner by text message. If you text that you love them, sending them love notes, writing them down, hiding them places is good, even if you've never done that in the past, because that will perpetuate the cycle that has not ended where good things continue to come to you and to your relationship, a relationship that's full of like love and joy and stuff like that. Um, if you're in an undefined relationship, they say this is maybe not the best situation. You might not be like really celebrating it, but you're not like really bitching about it either. They're just saying um, a lot of you might be like lying to somebody or even lying to yourself. There's some definite deception there. Um, but like there's also this energy of like, I know, I just don't know everything, right? And so they're saying, you know, for a lot of you, that's just kind of like eh, good enough, like whatever. I decided this is what I wanted. And so this is what I have and it is what it is. Um, but you might start kind of realizing, oh wait, Maybe that's what I wanted then, but like I'm constantly changing and evolving, right? Like every day we shed cells and we grow new ones. And so we're constantly becoming different people. Um, and so what it's saying is like, you're, it's okay if your ideas change and you want something different now, okay? Um, in regards to your social life or, you know, your relationships with family, friends, stuff like that, they're saying also really awesome where things are kind of just like moving in a positive direction due to fate and karma from the past. They said they might have been awesome in the past and they continue to be so. So they're saying, you know, this is because you're like such a nice, not mean person. Um, and they say, you know, it's a little bit foolish to believe that like, 
friendships and family member relationships are never going to change and that they'll always be like great. Um, but for the most part, they probably will if you kind of keep up the same stuff. They say situations, dramas, um, you know, chaos is going to happen from time to time in relationships, misunderstandings, people are going to piss you off, you know, but as long as you remain non-judgmental, like it doesn't have to be for the long term. And so, I mean, basically they're saying, you know, some of you have the ability sometimes to hold grudges and they're like, that's a choice you're making though. You could let it go and go back to having a really fantastic relationship. It might take time to heal and grow a little bit, but every single person is growing and evolving every day. Um, so it might not be so hard as you think to go back and um, kind of fix that or to get over something. It, it's really just a choice if you're going to hold a grudge, okay? Now, um, some of the other things here, they're saying prepare with stillness, self-control, and balance. So preparing for these next things that are coming in. Um, let's see what they want to talk about with that. They're saying, you know, and getting re ready to walk away from things that you used to care about um, to achieve more balance in your life. It'd be interesting if you have Libra in your chart because their reading was all about balance. Um, they're saying, you know, that many of you have help available to you and you don't ask for it, which is similar to somebody else's reading. Who's it with that? Maybe Leo. I think it was Leo. Um, so uh, what else do they want to say with that? They're like, there's something that keeps coming up about new ideas, about starting something new. For some, like start beginning a new routine. And I feel like for a lot of you, this is like a new life purpose you recently discovered more so than like a hobby. This is like a big, deep passion. Um, and like I said, that could be like a new job. That could be a new, um, maybe you open your own business. Maybe, like I feel like for somebody, it's like really is like, some sort of activism is like women's rights or you know who knows what and they say and that's not going to stop for a long time it's a new course that you're just starting to think about and you're um kind of in this place of like stillness and like working it all out and figuring out exactly how you're going to get there and we talked about leadership before and so that's the next card i wanted to talk to you about here um they're saying that with this one the inner power card, the Divine Father. Divine Father, thank you for co-creating my world with me. Now, with this card, basically what they say is that, you know, you can choose to lead others in two ways. Whether you want to or not, people are looking to you for guidance because you're great, because you're not bitchy is what keeps coming up in this reading, right? And so, um, I mean, you can lead from a very loving, compassionate way or... You can be like a total tyrant, right? But either way, you're going to be effective. It's just like, what are people's opinions of you going to be? Just, I think it's Tony Robbins who says something like, there's two, way to have, two ways to have like the highest tower in a city. You can like slowly but surely and methodically like build it the right way, like a really strong foundation over time. Maybe people that you're kind to will come and help you build that up. Or you can just, um, you know, explode the person's tower that is currently the tallest and you win by default. So like, who do you want to be, right? Because whether you like it or not, it seems like for a lot of Aquariuses, you're kind of being thrust into this role of leadership. And um, for some of you, that's a part of your passion. For others of you, it's more you're elected to be that person because you've been shown and proven that you are like a loving and kind person. And so, um, Keeping that in mind, like you want to continue to get your point across or to share your passions or, um, you know, whatever it is that motivates you in a very kind and loving way, especially when we disagree with somebody. Um, and like in politics, that can be very, very challenging, right? Um, now, our other card here is about that heart chakra passion, okay? It's two green colors here. It's about opening up your heart chakra and um, really expanding love out, but also allowing yourself to receive it with a number four, which is about um, balance and stability and things being very certain. Um, so there's like a lot of permanence to your reading actually. And the card here is about perseverance. So when you face challenges, you know, being tenacious and continuing 
to stand up for what you believe in and to lead from like a loving mindset and things like that. Um, so with perseverance and persistence, I create an exceptional life. Like there is really nothing that you can't get through, especially if you're able to call on the divine as that mentioned and, um, you know, ask the spirit world for guidance. So your color energy is one also about how to face our challenges as we walk down this path. And again, very similar numbers. Um, another sign had plum, but I don't remember who. Hmm. It was probably it was like Taurus or Pisces, I think. Anyway, with this one, um, they say overcome your challenges. Okay, that's what this is the plum ray of light is for. And it correlates to your third eye chakra. And so it's got a number of four, like things are okay, you know, like they're good, they're solid. And so it's time, like we build that solid foundation, it's time to start getting moving in this direction that we're being called to, to go through, to go down, to lead others. So, you know, when we're facing something difficult, we want to keep this in mind. So you can eat plums, you can wear this color, you can wear plum lipstick, um, imagine it as a light coming through that third eye or through the crown chakra. And so this is really going to help you with your dedication, with your commitment, with your relationships with other people, your devotion, your life purpose. So again, like I said, I feel like a lot of um, Aquarians are kind of just like being like woken up to what their life purpose is and just sort of being called to take this sort of action. So the affirmation says, help guide me through any changes that I may experience with ease, grace, and softness. Now that's interesting that the word grace is once again brought up because when we had this theme of poise, prepare with stillness, self-control, and balance, which to me is grace, right? So um, your other card here, like your kind of mantra says, today no person, place, or thing can irritate or annoy me. I choose to be at peace. So it's this sort of energy of like, okay, I have my belief system and I'm going to lead with love. I'm not going to stoop to your level. We can disagree, but we have to do that civilly and I'm not going to let you get to me, right? I'm just going to keep doing my thing. That's kind of what that energy is. Um, your chakra is for the month, the one to focus on is the throat chakra. So this is about what we say and how we say it, which is why we keep coming back to this whole concept of like, you know, you're not a bitchy person, but let's make sure that we're really infusing love into every communication that we have, that it's all like meant for a greater, like more loving purpose. And your lucky day of the month is June 14th. And then your crystal of the month is not surprisingly all about that concept of love. Um, it's the rose quartz, which everybody like immediately goes, oh, I want to fall in love. I need a rose quartz, right? So you probably already have this. If you don't have one, um, I can send you one with a playlist of how to use crystals and um, a full printout on all the things it does. But some of the things it does are unconditional love and inner peace, um, soothes emotional pain and heartbreak. It encourages forgiveness and trust. It's an antidepressant. It um, helps you with redecorating, actually. Isn't that interesting? It creates like this motivation to make changes that are good for you. Um, it increases your discernment. It gets rid of worry. It helps with spirituality, makes you feel calm, harmony, and chaos, which we need, right? We're building these foundations um, that might be chaotic at first, but they lead to new beginnings. It's tenderness. It's, um, let's see what else. It's so many other things. I can send you... Um, I can send you a big list if you order a crystal. So anyway, um, yeah, it, it's very much like, remember when I said, oh, it helps with like redecorating your house and stuff like that. Um, it really is this sort of energy of like, I want more beautiful surroundings. And so it will help you to feel motivated when it comes to creating you know, spaces and ideas and changes that are built on love and, you know, showing love being this like beacon of love light that shines all over the world to make it a better place. Oh, I'm getting like these goosebumps because that's true for somebody. Somebody's about to go out there and just like build this like amazing love light beacon that shines all over the world. I love you so much. Awesome. Tell me how you're going to shine your love light all over the world. I want to know in the comments. Bye. 
Thanks so much for watching this video and getting all the way to the end of it. I really appreciate your support. If you are interested in other videos, click here. If you are interested in subscribing, go ahead and click here. Hit that notification bell so that you get alerted to when new videos come out and also when I do surprise live streams. And then if you're interested in winning a free 20 minute video uh, reading personally every month, go ahead and click right here. Mwah!